The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesamento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to uh, take a quick look at a nice chart that uh, Rich Anderson sent us, uh, sent me uh, uh, last night to take a look at what's really happened in the market here since March. You can see what he calls the uh, awesome eight, which we all know what those are. Those are the fangs plus Microsoft and Tesla and a few others. But you can see the value line geometric index really hasn't done very much. The S&Ps, of course, made new highs, and the uh, NASDAQ, of course, is up into the stratosphere. It's very, very close to one standard deviation um, of, of the high. We put that in the newsletter. That comes in at 12,100, I believe. And uh, then uh, there's a second standard deviation up there. I'll show those charts in just a little bit. But I wanted to talk just a tiny bit about this. And then, then I'll give a little recap of the trading yesterday, uh, you know, that was a lot of fun. But, uh, folks, remember back in the – and the, I have no idea how high this stock market's going to go. I really don't. I mean, I, once it went above 3400 and uh, 50, I said, well, that that's it for me. I mean, I just I, – and yesterday we did an S&P trade that had a, a seven-point profit in it, but we put a stop at break even and, and got out of it. But here, let me let me explain to you why uh, why this is happening, and I and I, I I don't understand why. All I know is what's going to happen next. That I do know. Okay, this this what we're looking at here with this Nasdaq and this Awesome Eight is very similar to what we had with the dot com bubble. OK, and the dot com bubble was really big. I want to post a picture of this dude right here because I'm going to tell you a story that you may not believe, but it's a true story. Here is a picture of this dude that owns Sycamore Networks. OK, and I will tell you the story starting now in 1995 over in California. Uh, my dear friends, the Asoffs, uh, Jeff Asoff is the, was the number one broker for Bear Stearns in the whole in the whole country, the whole world. And then when they went under, he went out on his own and he handles a, a several billion dollars in uh, money out in California. His his uh, uh, older brother, Greg, is a real estate broker that, that has been extremely successful. And he has a, a beautiful 100-foot yacht there that uh, been, been over to look at. I won't go on it, but I was over to look at it. But let me tell you the story about Greg. The lady comes to Greg and said, I really need a job. This is 1995, you know, when things are kind of slow and everything. And so he, he she actually begs him to uh, take the job, but she's pretty smart. And so Greg sent us to real estate school to get her uh, uh, degree so that she could have a uh, office uh, manager's degree. They in California, you have to have that for multiple real estate offices. And so it, everything's going okay. And then the dot-com bubble comes about four years later, 1999. And her son, the picture that I just showed you, was the guy that started Sycamore Networks in their rented house, uh, garage okay well when the, the the buyout came or whatever that was for um, uh, dot com I don't remember what it was she walked into the office one day and she told Greg she said uh, you know he said well I'm quitting because you know my son gave me 2% of the stock and I'm now worth uh, 22 million dollars and I'm not going to work anymore and he said uh he said, well, that, that, he said, I can understand. They said, well, you give me three weeks, he said, so I can get you replaced. And, and her response to him was, F you, and walked out the door. Well, Sycamore Network stock went to zero, folks. And I happen to know that that lady held the stock the whole time. She never sold one share to buy a new car or buy a house or anything. She watched $22 million go to zero. And I just think that that's a, a good story to remember. Another story that you have to remember is of the um, 
of the stock since 1950. There's been 28,000 stocks since 1950. And of those, of those, 22% of those folks, 22% of those are history. I mean, that's a, that's a huge number, you know, when you stop and think of it. So let's keep, a, keep an eye on that. By the way, our guest today will be Tim Bost. And uh, he's always fun to look at. Now, I wanted to show what happened yesterday because this was very, very troubling because uh, it was interesting what happened. I had sent out a video to the 24-7 uh, folks, you know, to buy the gold at 1909. The low yesterday was 1908.50. But what I did was when we started the show at 6 o'clock, things were really active and gold was breaking down hard right at that time zone. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, uh, let's buy the gold at 1908. I, I shaved it by a dollar trying to be cute, right? Well, we, we, watched the, we watched the parade leave, and it rallied $60 an ounce all the way up to uh, 1963. And uh, I said, uh-oh, well, this is not going to be good. So we didn't get in that. We, we were able to get in a few other things. We had a nice trade in crude oil. During this time, we tried to buy the Treasury bonds, and we missed those by a tick, and those rallied seven. 750 points. So, I, I mean, it was really hard to try to get into these darn things. But uh, I, we ended up on the day just slightly profitable, which was good. But we left a 5,000. Uh, uh, Duffy, let me show you how, how different it is today. Just, just just to show you what it is. Here, here is. here was what we were looking at yesterday. And let me just show you today. This was the same thing that happened today. Oh, let me get this puppy up here. Hold on here a second. Here's what we were looking at yesterday with that big drop, and here's what we had today. That low today at 1939 was the 382 retracement. I set that out to say if you get a buy there, it, uh, take a buy in at 1940. It's rallied up to the last I saw was 1948. So you put your stop at break even and see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, but nobody else does either. So we'll be able to look. All I know, folks, is that when you see markets that go straight up like this, they don't end well. Uh, they never have. I mean, you know, you, you could think, well, maybe this is different this time, and maybe it is. You know, I've been watching them for a long time, and who knows? So that's neither that's neither here nor there. So that's it. Uh, I uh, It was so nice to have the, some of you Den folks in there yesterday uh, because it was uh, nice to get the feedback of what you were doing, and it was really great. Really great that uh, it was uh, you were in there helping me, and I and I certainly appreciate it. It's nice for the folks at TFNN to put it on because it was five very intense hours, and uh, we were able to uh, maneuver, maneuver through the markets. Okay, we just missed a few a uh, few monster trades by a tick or two. I'm talking 100, less than $100 on some of these things. But the patterns were working good, and the time frames that we looked at yesterday were working good. And so uh, all the things that we talked about doing, you know, we were able to see them, but we didn't get filled on some of the things that we would have liked to. Just missed it by hair, probably because I'm just too cautious. <laughs> but that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, now let's go to the NASDAQ and show you. Uh, oh, well, I do want to show you that 382 here. We posted this long before it happened here. Let's get this up here. You'll see here's the 382 in the uh, uh, that came in at, at right, uh, you can see it. You can see what's happening. When we get below that, then there's a problem in gold. So you just put your stop at break even. Okay, let's uh, move on here and talk just a tiny bit about the NASDAQ because it's going straight up. And I don't know where it's going. We'll take a break here. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, I don't know what happened since the last time we were on, but something kicked the uh, proverbial uh, things in the in the uh, kabuki. You can see here what's happened to the uh, to the gold market, and uh, boy, that's not uh, holy moly guacamole. That's been uh, wow. That's really good. Okay, let's move on here. Oh, Mr. Powell is talking. Good old Mr. Powell. Yep, we love him. Let's take a look at this Nasdaq, folks. Let me really post it again. I'm hey, I'm a technician, and you know, I'm a pretty good one. But uh, you know, sometimes I don't understand things, but I try to figure out what's going on with these markets. So let's move. Uh, uh, move on uh, what's going on here uh, the dollar should be dropping if all anyway take a look here this is the Nasdaq now let, let me just walk walk let me walk you through this go back to January of 2019 and notice that ABCD pattern that happened that, that topped back in February of that was that big ABCD now you'll notice that the the slope of that line uh, what it's doing you see how the slope of the line is now what's important is if you'll if you'll measure those moves in other words from january to april and then take the one between may and uh, january and now take the one from march to where we are right now and look at the slope of the line you see the slope of the line is increasing very very rapidly which it should because the market is expanding now you notice at the very top of that page is a a little red box that says 1.618, and that is the ABCD, and the CD leg is 
excuse me, is 144, 144% of that whole move from January of 19 up into February of 2020. Now, I, I looked at that to see if it would fit, and that's what I did. I just put that fit in to see if the slope of that line will mean it. So now we're, we're in the second standard deviate. We're starting the second standard deviation, folks. It's really difficult for the market to get beyond two standard deviations. Uh, and we're going to see if that's going to happen very shortly. But the the best way to handle this, and believe me, I I'm going to get a piece of that on the way down. But you know we'll have to wait and see. You know what's going to happen with this thing here uh, because of all the activity that we're having, folks. I want to take a quick break here to uh, just pull up the charts to see what's going on because we've had some tremendous moves here. Uh, S and P's uh, did we get to 3,500 yet? We're getting close. Well, let's just see what's going to go on here today. We'll have a little bit of fun. I'll put this up here so you take for what it's worth. Hey, this thing works part of the time. It don't work all the time, but we thought it was going to go higher. Oh, the Fed has a new plan. It couldn't go wrong. Well, let's see if the, the Fed pan. Wow. Is that 1983 in the gold? Shut the front door and raise the rent. That's $180. Wow, that's a good one. Okay, um, NASDAQ. Oh, we're, oh, there's the NASDAQ. We just hit the 12,000. We're almost at 12,100, folks. That's a that's a very, very key level uh, watching that. So pay very, very close attention. And the and what it, what is happening now? The bonds, which should be dropping, are now rallying. So that tells you that that market was very, very oversold. That's why we were looking to buy it yesterday, and, and we did at uh, 17. Uh, 117.17, and here we're up about a point from that right now. But what we're doing now in the bonds is just making a, let's just draw this in so you can see it. We're just making a 61% retracement. You'll be able to see it here in one second. The other thing, folks, is uh, the, the folks at TFNN have showed me how to uh, do live charts here in the den, and I'm going to try that next week after I practice a little bit. Uh, it, it involves putting a notebook up, and then I can, you know, you can actually see the drawings that I'm watching. And you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But that's like everything else. So all we've done so far in the bonds up there at 179.05. Uh, 03, excuse me, 179.03 was make a 61% retracement of the low that we had down yesterday at 177.11. Uh, they, you know, all with all the talk about the Fed, folks, a lot of this, they're anticipating that it is. I mean, I don't think the Fed has to do very much anymore because they they're holding the deck so they can they can bluff. And uh, I, I I believe some of this is just the fact that the emotionalism of the market is there. And there's nothing else you you know you have to pay attention to that. That's why being a, uh, you know being a what do you call it a um, ah shucks, a technician that gives you you know some type of an edge. So I posted the uh, the AI for the E mini S and P, and that says if it's correct and believe me it's wrong. Well, not wrong a lot, but it means it's gonna it's gonna crest about 10:15. And uh, be down the rest of the day, and uh, we'll see whether that's going to be the case or not. But we'll uh, we'll do one thing uh, at a time as we look at some of these uh, markets here. We got back up to in the euro. Let's take a quick look here at the euro this morning. Ah, oh, euro is doing a pretty nice retracement here. Let's just bring this up. I think we're almost at the 61% uh, retracement also in the euro. Oh, yeah, we did. We went above it a little bit. Let's get this up here. So you folks can take a quick look at the euro, and uh, we'll be watching here. All right, there we are. Uh, yeah, we're trading. <clears throat> we're tra <clears throat> Whoa, <clears throat> right at the um, sixty-one percent retracement, and the euro here is at one eighteen ninety-three. That old high we made was one nineteen seventy-five. So whatever it is, you know, we missed it. Uh, you know, w in other words, it it hasn't gone above that old high. When it gets above that, then the dollar is going to be. Uh, in uh, big trouble, uh, in my opinion, looking at some of these things that, that we're watching here. Uh, someone's had a, a question about the – here, we're, I, I'm trying to get these up here. Let me, let, let me re reiterate how important that high is at uh, one at 120 uh 12,100 we're only 80 we're only 80 handles away in the Nasdaq we just jumped 60 handles after going absolutely sideways all night which was saying there was no selling in the market folks the open interest has really jumped in the uh, stock index futures for the uh, S&P 500 and also 
uh, for the uh, NASDAQ. Both of those open interests have increased, so more buying is coming into it. And uh, the same is true uh, in the uh, gold market. But the one that is bullish, the most bullish of all uh, in these markets for the, for the metals, of course, uh, is the silver, folks. Uh, something, is, uh, something is going on in silver because that little puppy just doesn't want to... Uh, doesn't want to move. I mean, let's just show you yesterday. Hold on one second here where we are. And we were looking for this market to possibly, you know, come down to the, uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> one second, please. We were expecting silver to get down to 2300. All we could do was make a, a just barely 50% retracement, about 0.44, and it took one, two, three, four, five, six days to to do that, and now we rally from 26 up to the uh, 2785 uh, level. So, and right now we're setting at some resistance, which is nothing more than a, the 78% level of that. So, that's going to be an interesting one to look. A lot of emotionalism, folks. That's what I think this is. What we're seeing here is whatever the Fed said, and I have no idea uh, what they said. But you can you can see here the bonds have dropped more than a half a point after hitting the 61 percent retracement, and so I think the market's getting a little bit of a, of, of a, some common sense here, at least for a while. The key I think uh, today for trading is watch that S and P at 10:16. Uh, in the morning, your time, and uh, we'll see. Uh, that's Eastern time. 877 927 6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we are back, and we have as our guest today Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, Sarasota, Florida. Tim, how are you today? I'm doing very well, my friend. How about you? Living the dream, staying on the green side of the grass, as always. Oh, that's Listen, a good thing we, here. We got our, our yeah. masks on and our garlic cloves around our neck and everything you else, so it. we're doing good. Staying, <laughs> staying away from open graves. Hey, listen, uh, we have a question for one of our listeners, and I, I, I'm not joking. This is a real true question, okay? okay. Uh, wh where, where is the top in the stock market? <laughs> okay, I, I'll let you answer because I have what no, year are we I have no to clue. <laughs> we, we've got a lot of them in the past. We can go back and identify. <laughs> oh, I'm good with those past charts. Oh, trust uh -oh. me, I can. Handle. Go, go right ahead, buddy. Tell us what you're no, looking at today. Uh, no, the, the stock market is always interesting, and and you know we're always looking for tops. But uh, we got the news. Uh, what in the last? Uh, I guess yesterday uh, that uh, or day before uh, that. Uh, the, 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 we're going to see some changes in the composition of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and so I thought we'd take a, a quick peek at that today uh, because it's newsworthy. This will be taking place uh, next Monday on the 31st of August, and uh, what's typical when they make changes like this, uh, uh, they do it uh, after a weekend to allow for some recalibration uh, with, with things. Uh, I can't pretend to understand uh, the complexities of what they actually do in, in calculating the Dow with all the divisors and the numbers and all this kind of stuff. Apparently, this was provoked uh, by the fact that uh, Apple has just announced a, a split, four-for-one split, uh, which uh, uh, basically will dilute the impact of the market sectors that the Dow is trying to, uh, to track. Again, that's way over my pay grade as to how they figure all that out. At any rate, what's going on here is we're taking three stocks out and replacing them with three different stocks. Uh, Salesforce will be replacing ExxonMobil. Uh, Amgen will replace Pfizer. And Honeywell will replace uh, Raytheon. And so this is of some interest here because what's happening is, uh, you know, with 30 stocks in the index, uh, we're seeing a shift in one-tenth of the index uh, in terms of, of the, uh, the the stocks that comprise that. So that caught my attention anyway. <laughs> and so I did a little bit of digging and, and looking into this. Uh, and, you know, essentially when we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's a, a very, very colorful history. History. Uh, it was first published as the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the 26th of May uh, back in 1896. Now, uh, for about oh, 10, 15 years prior to that, uh, Dow had published different kinds of uh, forecasts and indices and things and began by, by tracking the, uh, the transportation stocks. Uh, and so that was actually the precursor to the industrial average. Uh, but the first attempt to, to uh, codify the industrial average came in 1896. I think he had 12, 15 stocks that he was tracking initially. Uh, that was expanded to 20 stocks uh, back in uh, 1916 on October 4th. And then finally, the Dow uh, 30 industrials, as we know it today, uh, didn't begin until October 1st in 1928. So we really use that as kind of the inception date for uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, now, of course, th this is widely followed on, on a popular basis. And when people... Uh, who are not in the markets ask what are the markets doing what they're basically interested in is what's what's the dow done today uh 
uh, and it's taken as a very uh, popular condensation of, of the, the market activity. Uh, but when we see big changes like this, uh, then uh, it catches our attention because they're recalculating things in a different way. And so uh, I'm always interested in historical research in the markets. And what this means is we've got different compositions at different times, and it gets a little bit screwy in trying to <laughs> account for the whole thing. Basically, since 1928, there have been 33 separate times uh, so far in which there have been changes in the composition of the Dow. Companies have gone out of business, and some of these have been fairly minor, like the, uh, a merger, a renaming of a company, a changing of a stock symbol, things of that sort. Uh, but uh, 33 times, and, and uh, next Monday will be uh, time number 34, that there's been an alteration there. Uh, so what we do here, based on our astro trading approach, is take a look at the first trade horoscopes uh, for the stocks involved. And we've got the data here for Salesforce began trading in June of uh, 2004. Amgen in June of 1983, Honeywell back in 1929 in September. Uh, and so what we're interested there was the, the time that the stock first began trading. And we look at the uh, horoscope configuration for that particular time and then compare what's going on currently uh, to that baseline uh, chart. And then uh, the study of those first trade horoscopes, uh, since there, there are 30 of them in the Dow, we can kind of uh, uh, sift through all that data and get a picture of what the representative basket looks like from an astrological perspective. And so I uh, spent a bit of time yesterday kind of digging into that, saying, OK, what's, what are the, what's the significance of all this that we now have uh, th uh, three different stocks uh, in there? Uh, and uh, essentially it boils down to two big things. First of all, with the, the change that we're seeing here, there's a decided shift in what we would call the fixed energy uh, from an astrological perspective in the composition of the Dow. Now, fixed energy, uh, without getting too deep in the weeds here, is simply the tendency for things to uh, be predictable and unchanged uh, and to uh, uh, be able to, to uh, project things in a linear fashion in terms of our forecasting. And so uh, what this means is that it's going to be a little more challenging with these uh, changes uh, in the composition of the Dow uh, to come up with accurate forecasts. We can expect things to, to change a little bit more rapidly and be a little more fluid and a little bit more unreliable in terms of our, of our ability to, uh, to get a handle on that. The other thing that caught my attention here is that the three stocks that were, are being removed uh, from the Dow all have uh, Mercury in retrograde motion with their first trade horoscopes. None of the three that are replacing them have a Mercury retrograde in their first trade horoscopes. Now, I've done a good bit of work on uh, researching uh, Mercury cycles uh, in the markets. In fact, we published a book a few years back called Mercury Money and the Markets. Uh, that's available on Amazon. Uh, but basically what this means is that prior uh, to this change that we're seeing uh, next week, We've got 30% uh, of the Dow uh, uh, individual stocks have Mercury retrograde, which is a high percentage. Uh, then uh, what's going to change after Monday is that only 20% of those stocks will have Mercury retrograde. Uh, now, the norm here is at about 18%. So basically, we're seeing a normalization of that factor. Uh, now, this means that uh, when we are forecasting this particular uh, index in, in the future and looking at it as an indicator of the markets, uh, it's going to be uh, particularly important to pay attention to those times when Mercury is in retrograde motion uh, because this is more likely to uh, respond in what we might call a, a normal way <laughs> when, when Mercury goes retrograde. Uh, so all this is a little speculative at this point, of course, but we're trying to figure out uh, – how do we need to to uh, recalibrate things on on that basis? Well, this is really good information, uh, Tim. You know, one of my things on my bucket list, which is quite short now, is <laughs> that uh, I, I'd really like to see a segment on CNBC about something like this, which I think we'll get. Hey, we're going to pay a few bills, and we'll be right back with Tim Boss to Financial Cycles Weekly, folks.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, that was a very interesting segment. You want to continue, please? Surely, surely. As we were saying before the break here, uh, what we're looking at is the the change in the composition of the Dow Jones uh, and Industrial Average, uh, taking away three stocks, uh, adding th uh, three new ones. Based on that change, we're seeing a shift in some of the astrological dynamics uh, that are going to factor into uh, our, uh, our our calculations and our forecasting uh, from uh, this time forward. Uh, and, and it's interesting because, as we noted earlier, uh, over the the last uh, uh, what uh, uh, 92 years or so uh, since uh, 1928, uh, the uh, at, at the inception of having 30 stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, there have been 33 times when there have been alterations to the composition of uh, this particular uh, index. This way of looking uh, at uh, the markets. Uh, now here are the the most recent changes. Uh, the last 16 times this has happened. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the last time was back in April of this year. Uh, basically, uh, there, were, there was a merger that uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, United Technologies bought Raytheon, and they renamed the company as Raytheon, and so it changed the listing there on the exchange, a fairly minor uh, tweak to things. Uh, and, and so Raytheon, incidentally, is one of the ones that's being taken out <laughs> at this point. So fairly short-lived visit to, to the composition of the Dow uh, by that particular uh, uh, stock. So we can kind of scan down and see that every couple of years or so there are different changes. And I've highlighted a few of these here back on September 23rd, uh, 2013, and I put three little asterisks. That was the last time that we had three 
uh, stocks changed. Uh, we took out three stocks and added three new ones on that date. Uh, prior to that, the uh, most recent time was uh, April uh, in uh, 2004. On that date, we also uh, made changes in, 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 in three separate stocks. And then prior to that, on November 1st, 1999, and in March of 1997, on each of those occasions, there were four stocks uh, that were removed from the Dow and four new ones added. Uh, so those were the ones that I was uh, looking at as kind of uh, precedence to what's going on right now. Because what really struck me in all this is that, hey, we're changing 10% of the stocks in the Dow, and I wonder what that's going to do to the accuracy of the calculations and what as is going to happen in the market. So what we did was go back and look at these four uh, highlighted examples here to see exactly how did the Dow respond when these changes were made. Uh, the first one here that we're taking them in, in uh, the most recent one was back in uh, uh, 2013 uh, on the 23rd of September. And we can see here that uh, the Dow declined over the next three, four-week period by about 7% right after that change was made. Now, we don't know if this is causative or not, but it's interesting to observe that, uh, that in this particular case, the Dow declined pretty sharply. It found a trading bottom and then rebounded after that. So it's not a, a permanent long-term distortion, but still a very tradable kind of situation that came up when we had this change in the composition of the Dow uh, back in 2013. Prior to that, uh, we had this in uh, 2004. Uh, back in April of 2004, uh, there were three stocks taken out of the Dow, three new ones added. And then what we saw there over uh, the next few weeks was a decline of 6.6%, almost identical to what we saw in uh, 2013. Uh, so this begins to look like a little bit of a pattern here. <laughs> so we went all the way then back to uh, 1999. In this case, there were four stocks taken out. It was a much more short-lived pullback uh, over a period of about uh, two weeks there. Uh, we had a decline of 2.4%. Uh, uh, so that was fairly uh, neutral, not nearly as significant as these other examples that we looked at. Uh, but then we went ahead and, and went back to the one prior to that. And in 1997, in March, uh, we had four stocks taken out four stocks added, and what happened over the next three weeks or so was a decline of 8.8% uh, in the value of the Dow. So based on these previous examples, what we're anticipating is after this change is made, there is a probability that we'll see a decline in the price of the Dow. Now, does this make a major market crash? Not necessarily. Uh, but the question was, when is the trading top? <laughs> uh, as we began our, our, our session today. And this is something that we're going to be looking at here uh, as we uh, finish up August, move into September. This is one very minor factor that we're going to throw into the hopper here uh, to consider for a little bit of a bearish bias coming in based on these uh, admittedly cherry-picked historical precedents here. Okay, good. Well, we've got something to look at. This is really interesting. You want to continue, please? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at all of these dynamics here with the Dow and uh, the, the applications of astro trading uh, to this. And, and we continue to do a lot of work. We have a membership program and, and work with our members in trying to refine uh, techniques for analysis and for trading uh, accuracy. Uh, and when we see a, a, a situation like this, what's interesting is it's motivated by what we might call external market conditions. Uh, uh, rather than astrological factors per se. Uh, so we didn't make the decision to change the stocks in the Dow. The powers that, that be uh, came up with that idea. Uh, so in response to that, our first uh, approach then is to see what's going on astrologically. Is there something we can, can correlate uh, that with? And in this case, uh, what we've done here is review the, uh, the uh, components of what's going on with the particular stocks uh, and see what that does to shift uh, the index from uh, that kind of perspective. Uh, now, it, it's interesting when we uh, start uh, uh, shifting uh, you know, a company like ExxonMobil and replacing it with uh, Salesforce, uh, that says we're, we're looking at a different composition of the economy, and there are broader perspectives there as well. But from the astrological perspective, we can narrow it down uh, somewhat and then uh, begin to tweak our forecasting methodologies. Uh, now, in applying astro 
technology to the markets, which is what we do. Uh, we found uh, that we have a lot of great tools at our disposal. The question is, are we using the right tool at the right time? And what we found is that a lot of folks who get involved in this particular method of market analysis uh, kind of latch on to one or more things that can be pretty exciting in terms of the uh, results that they can yield in, in terms of accurate analysis and, and uh, uh, helps with, with trading, uh, but they misapply the tools and they, they do the wrong thing, use the right thing at the wrong time and, and, and so forth. So we've been working on trying to sort some of all of that out and we're doing a webinar coming up here. Uh, this will actually be on Saturday uh, this weekend. We're going to do it uh, to uh, make it available then and we're titling it Eating Soup with a Fork <laughs> because <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> is what happens. You know, the tools are great if you use it for the right thing. If you're going to have steak, use a fork, but with soup, uh, a spoon works better. And so uh, as a way of illustrating uh, the principle that we're talking about during this session, uh, we, we've decided to come up with this uh, little analogy there to have fun with it. Uh, but, you know, there are uh, mistakes that are you know, fairly obvious. If you uh, learn to apply the, 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 the right tool to the job at hand, you can get much, much better results. So we want to be able to focus on that uh, with our, our webinar coming up here. Tim, is it a guarantee money back on your free uh, free webinar on Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, if you, you, we'll give you double your poverty back. How's that? Hey, that's good. Listen, <laughs> stay with us, and when we come back, we can tell the folks how they can reach you and sign up. We'll be back with okay. Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, folks. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab.
them. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss. Tim, you want to tell the folks how to uh, sign up for Saturday's free webinar? Absolutely. Uh, we've got a link here, uh, bit.ly slash trade tweak and that's all lowercase uh type in bit dot l y slash t r a d e t w e a k and that will take you right to the registration page uh, for the webinar again there's no charge uh, for that uh, all we need to get is your name and email address so we can send you a reminder notice when we get ready to uh to go with that uh, session and of course, the the link to uh, to connect with the webinar. Uh, so that's fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, you know, we we have a lot of services and things that we offer here at FinancialCyclesWeekly.com, but the unifying theme of what we do is what we call uh, astro trading education. Uh, I've been involved with astro trading for a number of decades now. Uh, we've been publishing our newsletter, Financial Cycles Weekly, since 1988. Uh, so we've had a, f a few years of experience there uh, as well. Uh, but we've also provided training programs, and we have membership programs, and have published books and DVDs and all kinds of things. But they're all about one main theme, which is uh, training traders to use the astro trading dynamics uh, to enhance uh, their rewards from their trading experience. Now, this doesn't mean we throw out other kinds of trading dynamics. We also use uh, fundamental analysis. We like to trade companies uh, that have actual earnings and that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We use technical analysis tools as well to refine our, our timing and entry points with the trades. But then we add this additional layer of the astrological analysis, the planetary cycles that help us identify bigger trading opportunities. So if we combine technical analysis and fundamental analysis, is an astrological analysis it gives us a unique mix that we call the astro trading advantage and that's what we want to turn people on to as you you probably gather i get pretty enthusiastic about it myself it's what i spend most of my time focusing on uh, and so we have things like this webinar uh to introduce people to some of these concepts uh, and uh, okay. enhance their performance thanks a lot tim we'll have you on again soon tim boss financial cycles weekly folks See you tomorrow.